Yeah, this is Tam, Inventor in Paradise. Uh, we're clearing in here, we're focusing in, we're moving in towards, there it is. I'm going to talk to you about the uh, fuel regulator gauge. I bought this thing at uh, J.C. Whitney's. I think it cost around $31. I bought four of them through the different vehicles I've worked on. And all you do is sever the fuel line right up near the carburetor area and put this fuel regulator in there. Yeah, oh, there's a piece of black wood right behind the. When you buy the regulator, it has a right angle plate here. And I cut a piece of 2x4 and uh, cut it on my radial arm saw and shaped it to nest against the uh, tilt of the firewall there, the wheel well. Put a couple screws into the wood and then uh, screwed the uh, mounting plate so that the regulator sets nice and level, presents itself nicely. Cut the gas line, hook it on the in-feed side, and then on the exit side. The exit side, the hose just wraps around here, and it feeds right up to the carburetor. Okay? And that carburetor, some of these old carburetors have a float chamber in it, and they got uh, needle valves in there that aren't all that uh, well seating sometimes, and they might leak. So if you had that fuel pump uh, pumping away an electric one, it might blow the fuel right past that the needle valve and really doesn't stop pumping. Now, when you buy a new electric fuel pump, a lot of them that are available here are six or seven pounds of pressure. Well, that's a little too much. It's uh, not friendly to the carburetors of old. The carburetors with the floats and needle valves, they like the European ones, the MGBs and those, they like uh, three pounds or less. This is dialed. It has a it has a little dial on top here. And you can almost see, you can see the arrow there. It's a little higher than 9 o'clock high, right there. That arrow is pointed at a uh, digit around the perimeter of number 2. So it's set at approximately 2 pounds of pressure. And this engine runs fine with that setting. And now I know I'm not pushing too much fuel into the carburetor system. Now that's what that regulator is all about. And I really advise putting it on there. Well, that's what the fuel pressure gauge does. Now, accompanying that, uh, I put on a switch to control the fuel pump. And I think that's a heck of a good idea. Time and again, you're working on the engine here, and uh, you're pulling wires or looking at fuses or uh, handling tools, and, <laughs> you know, you may create a spark or two now and then. It, you really... It's so convenient to be able to flip that switch and turn the uh, fuel pump off and know that that thing isn't going to be feeding any fuel into into your engine compartment. I put the switch right in the column just near the ignition uh, key entrance. Here I am inside the car. There's the steering wheel. See right? See that switch right there? That switch goes to my fuel pump. Push it down. The fuel pump's off. Lift it up. I got it engaged. Either way. Now. What that does, it shuts off the fuel pump completely. So with that fuel pump switch tripped, the fuel pump isn't perking. It isn't pumping. So when you're inside the engine in here, checking out electrical uh, circuitry, maybe popping fuses out or fixing wires or just having tools bang into things, you know? It's so easy just to have one little spark or something go off. You really don't want any uh, fuel smell, odor, or dripping. You, uh, it's, it's just not a good idea. So the switch is great, besides being a good deterrent for someone else starting the car, obviously, right? They aren't getting gas. They aren't going to start that car and go anywhere. So the two of those go in tandem, and I would suggest putting the switch on to control the fuel pump itself and I really suggest putting on this uh, fuel pressure regulator to protect the amount of pressure you're feeding into your carburetor so you don't get excess fuel or excess spillage. Well that's it for now. Talk to you soon.